Welcome everyone. We are in Tokyo. It's the weekend, the sun is shining and I'm excited. It's the first day I'm able to actually walk around, explore and get a real feel for the city. Uh, there's a lot to do, there's too much to do even, but I've drafted up an itinerary. We're going to try and hit up as many of those spots as possible and even, inshallah, hopefully, maybe even uh, check out a halal ramen place, so that could be good. Um, first thing first is I just got my SIM card sorted because it's so important to get around. I've got this Japan travel sim which works for 30 days you can get it in 3 gig or 1.5 gig it's a bit expensive though so it cost me about 30 quid 30 pounds for um for 3 gig and there's only a few stores you can get out there's uh, one called big camera which, and you can recharge it at all the family marts as well but yeah we're gonna go to our first spot now and i'll see you guys there <laughs> So I decided to get dropped off here in Harajuku just so that I could explore these little streets of the main road all these tiny little independent shops anything really that you could get lost in and get a feel for the place even a photo shoot for example As you saw just behind me there are loads of people just queuing up and I was just checking out what they're queuing up for um, it's just collectible cards that's got like girl, female anime characters on um, and like they're just getting it and they're all just getting excited about what they've got in their packs. It's like, you know when you queue up and get the latest uh, sneakers and stuff, it's basically that but yeah, just vibes man. So first stop was this amazing coffee place, I will link it below, you guys have to come here. They were doing spe specialty coffee and they were in a little quiet road that was perfect and oh my god the person making my coffee i mean have you seen this amount of concentration in any coffee shop they had amazing little cheesecakes so of course i grabbed an oreo one and they had amazing sitting outside so you could enjoy the sun and enjoy your coffee and pastry I came for the coffee, but honestly, guys, the cheesecake was amazing. Look at those layers. Alhamdulillah. Coffee fix done. I followed the crowd to the main Harajuku area, but not until I stopped at this little Korean food shack. So there were lots of different little shops here, these amazing pastries, I mean look at those, there was such a big variety, um, but I didn't come for sweet pastries again. So I actually came in for these amazing corn dogs, they had loads of different flavours, but for me I went for the sweet potato one. All you have to do is put the money in the machine, you pick the flavour you want, that then prints you out a little ticket so that you give it to the cook. If you're unfamiliar with corn dogs, where have you been? <laughs> Essentially, it's mozzarella cheese on a stick, then covered in batter, then another type of cheese before it is deep fried yet. <laughs> Not the healthiest. Oh, and mine had bits of sweet potato around it as well. Sauce. Really good, man. The sweetness in the potato and the saltiness of the sauce goes really well together. All right, food, food, food. Next up, we've got Santa Monica crepes, famous for his very unique uh, crepes. So let's check it out. Forget a normal menu. Look at all these choices, literally in front of you. Look at all these flavours guys, strawberry, double chocolate chip, thank you. Yeah, at this rate, I don't know how I'm going to have halal ramen today, maybe it might be another day, but um, yeah, I've got the mixed berry one, so I'll keep it a bit simple, but essentially it's a crepe filled with cream, fruits and anything you can get on. I don't really want um, a whole cheesecake in there like the others there, but uh, yeah. So this is the main street in this area. So you might notice that there's a lot of people um, dressed up for, for this street. This is because what fun fact is that a lot of people get uh, headhunted for uh, modeling jobs here. So there's a lot of people that come here specifically dressed up, hoping to um, get found. I then got led down this weird alleyway to some fake designer store that I didn't really want to go to. But hey, 
part of the experience, right? This tree really has the essence of what Tokyo has to offer. Apart from these anime characters and strangely dressed individuals, you get a lot of little shops around, uh, very cute little gifts that you can get and lots of different food. If you're anything like me, after this you probably want to go to a quieter park. So let's go to the national park. The most famous Japanese garden in the whole of Tokyo, home to loads of ancient trees. This park is beautiful and only costs a couple of pounds just to get in, so get ready to set your watch up and get your steps in. As I walk through the park, there's amazing trees like the one just behind me. You know, ones that have been there for, you know, hundreds of years. It makes me think of a hadith that I was just looking up just now and I thought, why not just mention that in this vlog? And I'm just paraphrasing here, but uh, the Prophet wasallam was sitting down with the Sahabas. And this is reported by Ibn Umar who was at the time very young. During the time of the Hijra, Ibn Umar was only 10 years old, so you can imagine he was approximately around that age at that time. And the Prophet ﷺ said that among the trees, there's one which the leaves do not fall, and it's like a Muslim. And he asked the Sahaba ﷺ, can anyone name that tree? And everyone stayed silent. Ibn Umar narrates this story saying that he knew the answer, but because he was shy, you know, as a young, young child, he didn't say it. He later told his father and his father said, I wish you had said it, you would have made me really happy. A couple of things we can learn from this hadith. The no number one is the Prophet ﷺ used a tree as an example. The Nakhla tree, the palm tree, one that was very known to his gathering. So therefore, using examples and metaphors that people could relate with and understand. The next thing is the way and method of teaching, one which was using uh, questions. The Prophet ﷺ could have just literally just said the, the tree, but no, used the question just to see who was engaged, who was listening. Another thing we can learn is that in the gathering, it wasn't just, you know, the elders. It was actually a mixture since Ibn Umar was also in the gathering. The next thing we can start wondering about is why was the palm tree used? Well, just looking up the various benefits of the palm tree, one that is described in the Middle East as the tree of life, every single part of the tree from the roots to the leaves can be used and has benefits just like the muslim can have lots of benefits it has huge branches that provide shade just like muslim should reach out and provide benefits and help others it is tall and strong just like the one behind me as we know there's a hadith that says also that a stronger believer is preferred over the weak believer but there is benefits in both and finally, the palm tree has a heart, usually it's at the top in the trunk, just like the believer has a heart and the importance of the heart and being protected by the strong body. Deep reflection over, now let me show you how beautiful this garden is. And I'm sure we don't need any background audio for this. Guys, this next view is about to blow your minds. Hang on. There is so much to see in this park, so much natural beauty, exactly the place you want to go to to escape the craziness of Tokyo. Filled with huge Japanese fish following you along as you walk, and even a turtle. That was amazing, alhamdulillah. Now we just need to pray uh, Dhuhr and Asr, and there's a masjid not too far from here, about 13 minutes walk, so that's where we're gonna go now, and then after that we'll head to the rest of the attractions. So I've just arrived at the masjid, uh, it's just behind me, it's there, I don't know if you can see, it's a small little alleyway and it's in a bit of a weird part of town so just come walk straight through and go straight there if you need to use this masjid. Hi, Assalamualaikum. How are you? Wait, what? I was so confused walking in with my camera, I didn't expect this. It's like I was walking into someone's house. Hi. Hi. I just need to... That was Kokom, an Indonesian sister, a volunteer in the mosque, just sharing a watermelon with a river brother. We're here, it's around Maghrib time nearly. We're gonna try and go up there and catch a view of the sunset, inshallah. So let's go up.
also don't forget to go to the floor below where you can actually walk on the glass and see everything underneath it's a weird feeling but definitely worth it arrived at the last stop for the day today um, actually I didn't go to the halal ramen place that's because it's already closed but I will inshallah end up going and I'll do a specific video on that today though I've decided to come to uh, Yakiniku Panga Yakiniku actually means a barbecue it's actually a halal wagyu place I've already been there and I can tell you it's absolutely amazing oh my god like it's the best steak I've ever had alhamdulillah um, but I'm going to do a specific video on it and it will be a separate one where I'm going to detail what, what you can eat there inshallah but Jazana Fai for watching tomorrow I'm actually going to Kyoto and taking the bullet train um, and then exploring other cities apart from Tokyo before coming back for more work so um, make sure you subscribe watch more videos and I hope they are enjoyable for you guys I'll see you on the next one Assalamu alaikum.